So we continue our discussion about uh, the concept of uh, grain boundaries in grains. We have seen that uh, a grain boundary is basically treated as a rotation boundary also because the grains on two sides of the grain boundary are rotated with respect to each other. Now going forward uh, when we try to classify grain boundaries uh, we need to understand uh, one more concept that uh, whether the grain boundary is uh, a line or a surface uh, this is what uh, is to be first understood which will make us then understand the classification very easily okay so what we what we observe here is that when you look at this portion of the figure here the lower one we are seeing here that uh, you have uh, your grain one which is grain number one which is growing in this orientation and your grain number two which is growing in this orientation from the top it seems like that in a two dimensional view that these are the we are saying that these are the grain let us say this is the grain boundary here so we are saying that this happens to be your grain boundary so it seems to be a line there but actually is it a line or a surface or when I refer to them grain boundary as a type of a defect in a crystal structure we said that uh, it, whether it is a line defect or whether it is a surface defect so we shall understand that it is a surface defect it is not a line defect so what is happening here precisely is that when you look at the grain number one you may see that it is like this so if it is the same grain growing here even after this from this point onwards also you will find that the same thing will happen growing from the other side also and when you see the grain number two you can see that this is what is happening to this so it is growing from one side grain number one was growing from in its own side so what is the grain boundary then from the tops when you look at that it seems to me that uh, this is the region which is maybe a two dimensional one you just, you just see a line there that this is this happens to be the grain boundary but that's not correct when you look at a uh, material it is a bulk material it is a three dimensional material in which it is observed that you have this plane when you refer to as this plane here this is the plane which we refer to as the boundary plane or a boundary surface and this is the second boundary for the second grain so you can see that this is grain number one and this is grain number two clearly visible that grain number two let us say is rotated with respect to grain number one so that is why you have two terms now the axis of rotation and second one is the angle of rotation and we'll classify boundaries based upon these two concepts only axis of rotation as well as angle of rotation on the basis of axis of rotation we will classify them as <coughs> tilt boundaries and twist boundaries whereas on the basis of angle of rotation you can on the magnitude of angle of rotation precisely you can say them as small angle boundaries and large angle boundaries so when I when I look at this description here we say this is a boundary plane so in, if this is the boundary plane which is the normal to the boundary plane the normal to the boundary plane happens to be in this direction and grain number two is rotated with respect to grain number one around which axis where is the axis of rotation so here the axis of rotation happens to be this one this is the axis of rotation here <coughs> around which grain number two or grain number one whatever you take has been rotated and this is what we say it has been rotated so otherwise if you could have one could have grown as a single grain so it could have gone the same orientation similarly two could have gone on the same way but because they are growing into different orientations and while now we are actually reaching at a point where they are they are trying to meet because there is no other point there is no other space further to for them to grow independently that is why there will be what we say a zone which will be an interface between the two grains and where the crystal the structure 
will be not perfect. So this is the concept of what we refer to as grain boundary there. And they are treated as surface defined. So you have this grain boundary surface here, the normal to the boundary surface here. And we say this is the axis of rotation. So this happens to be your axis of rotation. So in this particular case, this will be described as one type of grain boundary, which I'll describe in our next slide. The basic fundamental of this, this slide was just to explain to you the concept whether the grain boundaries are a surface defect or whether they are a line defect. Okay, so based upon this understanding, let us come to our first classification that what is a tilt boundary. So in a tilt boundary, what we simply say here is, now you, I have tried to draw the same figure again here, only now <coughs> with, uh, with the help of only one, one, one uh, can say in a small scale. So you have the first grain, grain A, which was growing in this direction. So the grain B, this is a grain B here. So just, just similar to what I just showed. So this can be grain A, this can be grain B, and this is the grain boundary surface, the, or the grain boundary this is the grain boundary surface. N cap happens to be the normal to the grain boundary surface. So tilt boundary is actually obtained when the rotation of the two grains is about an axis in the boundary plane or parallel to the boundary plane. So in the case of a tilt boundary, the axis of rotation is parallel to the boundary plane or in the boundary plane. <coughs> so this is your boundary plane and this green one is your axis of rotation. <coughs> then the other thing, the misorientation axis, the, the axis now, which we say is the actually called as the orientation or better to call it as the misorientation axis. So the misorientation axis is perpendicular to the grain boundary normal. So the grain boundary normal is this and the axis of rotation or axis of misorientation is perpendicular to the grain boundary normal. That is very, very clear here. So this is the concept of what we refer to as tilt boundary. Similarly, now you can say that what is the concept of twist boundary. Now it is not necessary that the grains will only grow from the sides. Because in a three-dimensional bulk material, a grain may be growing above each other also. So that is why you may have a grain A, you may have grain B, you have grain C also, which are growing on top of each other also. In that case, you have the concept of twist boundaries, which comes as, as a concept of what we call as the grain boundary between such grains. So when we refer to now here, what is grain A? So the grain A is available here in this plane. Grain B is this one. And the grain boundary is now, the grain boundary plane happens to be the one which is shown here. So this one is the grain boundary plane. So the normal to the grain boundary plane happens to be N gap. The axis of misorientation or axis of rotation. The axis of rotation is now, what we say, <coughs> perpendicular to the plane of the grain boundary. That's the basic difference. If you remember, in the case of... Uh, tilt boundary, we said that axis of rotation is parallel to the boundary surface or boundary plane. Whereas in the case of twist boundary, we are saying here that the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the boundary plane. So the boundary plane is here, the axis of rotation is here now, the, the blue one, it is perpendicular to this. And the misorientation axis, or this same axis, the misorientation axis or the axis of rotation, same way, <coughs> is parallel to the grain boundary normal. So the grain boundary normal and the axis of rotation, axis of misorientation, are parallel to each other. Whereas in the case of our tilt boundaries, they were perpendicular to each other. So that's the basic understanding between the concept what we call as twist boundaries and tilt boundaries. Why I'm explaining the concept of green boundaries is because we already said that uh, in our strengthening mechanisms, one of them happens to be grain boundary strengthening. So I'll uh, discuss that in my next video. So that before going to grain boundary strengthening, it is 
fundamentally necessary for us to understand the concept of grain boundaries and that is why I am referring to this. So, <coughs> once we have understood the concept of a polycrystalline material means number of grains are more than one, then we say the <coughs> concept of grain boundaries, the interface region between the two grains, then, concept, then comes the one more important uh, uh, topic or one, imp one more uh, important question that uh, when you talk about a polycrystalline material here so you may find that there are a number of uh, there are a number of grains available to us now what is the size of the grain or i can call it as the grain size so how do you measure the grain size uh, because you are talking about uh, a, a, a microscopic level normally the grain uh, grain sizes are in micrometers so it may be actually impossible or nearly impossible to measure the grain size of each and every millions of grains which are available to us in a bulk material and that is why some statistical methods are used to signify the grain size concept that you say that you talk about the average grain size. If ASTM has given a method to find out the average grain size then we will just uh, elaborate that how do you talk about the grain size. So before going to the grain size, let us talk about uh, one more, uh, the classification of grain boundaries. The earlier classification was based upon what you called as the, uh, what, what you call as the uh, your, uh, axis, uh, axis of rotation. The second classification is now based upon the angle of rotation, which we say uh, they are termed as uh, small angle grain boundaries or large angle grain boundaries. This figure explains it very, very simply and very, very clearly. So you can say that this is your grain A, this is your grain B, and this is your grain C. So when you refer to grain A, all the, you can say the cells are oriented something like this. So the cells are, you can say they are something like this. They are oriented like this way. Grain B, they are oriented this way. So the angle of misorientation. Or the angle of misalignment is actually measured between the two consecutive two or this end grain so this is called as the angle of misalignment if it is large and if it is larger than around five degrees we say that is called as the large angle boundary and if it is less like in this the, in the case of b a and c a and c here we understand that the angle of misorientation is very small so a is this here and C is also almost similar. So the angle of misorientation happens to be smaller here. So that is why the boundary between A and C, this one between between A and C is referred to as your small angle <coughs> boundary, whereas uh, the boundary between grain A and B is referred to as the large angle grain boundary. So that is why we say that uh, this happens to be the classification based upon the angle of rotation. Okay. So, something more in uh, some more information about grain boundaries. One thing which we need to know is that atoms are not that regularly bonded along a grain boundary. They become irregular somewhat. What you see incidentally in this figure happens to be, if you remember, we say that this is the symbol for an edge dislocation. This is the symbol for an edge dislocation. And if you see, if you try to visualize this way that I have shown uh, three edge dislocations. And now try to compare them this this description to the concept of a low angle grain boundary. You can see here that the angle of misorientation between this side and this side happens to be very very small. So I can say that uh, edge dislocations or a set of edge dislocations can create actually small angle grain boundaries. <coughs> so our, our main concept is that uh, the atoms are not that regularly bonded along the grain boundaries and uh, the last one which I need to tell you is that uh, the grain boundaries are more chemically reactive than the grains 
themselves. So you have to your grain boundary region happens to be more chemically reactive. So those the what is the use of this? We will see it later. Okay. As I said already, that uh, a small angle grain boundary, tilt boundary, actually to be specific, can be visualized as a set of edge dislocations. So I hope you this uh, you doesn't uh, this does not need any uh, any any further elaboration. So what you find is uh, grain A and grain B and a boundary in between them. We said uh, the small angle grain boundary, we are treating it as a small angle grain boundary because the angle of orientation happens to make angle of misorientation is not that large. So we find that the angle of misorientation is very, very small here. So this happens to be the angle of misorientation, which may be less than less than five degrees. And this can be just seen as a set of edge dislocation. So you can see that uh, edge dislocations have happened here and that is why at the boundary here the misorientation has happened and that is why you this is just a very basic concept which tells me that a uh, small angle grain boundary can be visualized as a set of edge dislocations so this makes it very very clear okay now coming to your grain size de uh, determination that how do you determine the grain size I will briefly explain it. It is called one of the methods that I am explaining here is called the linear intercept method. It's called the linear intercept method. So what it is, what you observe here is a hypothetical micrograph. Actual micrograph will not be a set of lines, but actual micrograph when you observe it under a microscope, it will always be again. Uh, a structure which will have a number of number of lines visible to us which we treat them as grain boundaries so what you do if you have a <coughs> micrograph with you and i want to see that now what are these all grains so these are all grains separate grains so this is one grain this is the second one so there are maybe maybe 100 grains here available to you here and then obviously in a microscope you have a magnification also so because you are looking at it under a magnification. I want to find out the average grain size or just to give you some number. So ASTM says that okay you can use a, a linear intercept method which says that you what you have to do you have to count the number of grain boundary intersections by a set of straight lines. Okay what is the meaning of that? You take the micrograph on this micrograph you now draw a set of straight lines so i draw one line here let us say the green one randomly randomly oriented straight line and now what we see we count the number of grain boundary intersections by the set of straight lines so we say let's say this straight line it has how many grains it is intersecting how many intersections it is having so it has a now if you mark the intersections let us say it has one two three four five six seven eight it has got eight intersections the first line then you can draw another set of line another line let us see how many intersections does this have so it has one two three four five six seven eight let's see another eight you draw another line one two three four five six seven eight another eight uh, incidentally this happens to be the same but it will not always uh, you, it will not always be the same so let us say you have the number of intersections and the sum of intersections happens to be p that is if there are three lines i have drawn so the sum of intersections happens to be eight plus eight plus eight twenty four so p happens to be twenty four here just i'm Taking this value, I'll take up one example in my next slide uh, exactly from the textbook. So <coughs> this is P. And then we have to calculate the total length of these lines. The total, what is the total length of these lines? So we have to measure the length on an actual scale. So you may be taking it on a piece of paper and then drawing these lines. And what is the length, total length? So that is called as LT. Then the mean intercept length mean intercept length which is a measure of the grain diameter which is L, L bar L bar is nothing but LT upon PM 
so lt happens to be what lt happens to be the total length of the interline p happens to be number of intersections and m happens to be the magnification at which this micrograph has been taken uh, let us let us try to take it this way so uh, this example tells us uh, one one way to look at that so what we observe here is that uh, you have the micrograph given to you <coughs> so the scale is given it's 100 micrometer that means uh, what, what, what does this mean so normally under all the micrographs the scale is given this means that this much length this much length here is representing on a scale the length actual length of 100 micrometer so you actually measure this now so if you are plotting it on a paper you measure it so you when you measure it it may come to let us say it comes to 15 millimeters so the actual length happens to be 15 millimeters but actually what, what it is representing it is representing 100 micrometers so this will tell me the magnification then what you do we are just drawing the number of lines maybe you have drawn more number of lines here we have drawn here seven number of lines here and you find out the intercept of the how many intersections these each of the lines is having so you find here one two three four five six seven eight so the first one has got eight inter intersections then you have one two three four five six seven eight nine so this one has got nine intersections so what you do then then you for this all seven lines you calculate the total sum of intersections <coughs> that is p you take calculate the length of each individual line so if this was 15 mm which we said on an actual scale this line may be let us say 50 mm so you calculate that also that 50 into 7 may be 350 millimeter is the total length and then you calculate the value of l bar once the value of l bar is known to us there are standard charts available which will tell you about grain size that what grain size we are actually referring to as i said that <coughs> it is not possible for us to measure the individual size of grain or uh, individual grain size of all the grains so we are actually mostly looking at the average value of the grain size so average grain size is what we are referring to and linear intercept method is uh, one of the methods which is useful for us to find out the the, the uh, average grain diameter uh, in the case of pure polycrystalline materials so this is the concept of grain boundary and uh, the concept of uh, your grain size determination just briefly uh, we will talk about uh, the concept of grain boundary strengthening in our next video thank you